What is up guys, my name is Matt from Magic the Greatening, and today I got the cheapest deck I have ever made on my channel. It's going to be $8 main board, $7 sideboard, but it's Blue Red Prowess. So there's a few upgrades, quote unquote upgrades, from my Amonkhet version of this. Um, a few of those upgrades are just straight up it, this being rotation proof. My Amonkhet version is not, but this is rotation proof. You will be able to play this $15 deck through next year, or almost through the entire entirety of next year. Uh, before we get into it, go ahead, hit that like button. Helps out a lot. Subscribe if you are new, and click the top eye icon, right hand corner. Vote for next video's deck tech. Vote for which one you want to see. We got some competitive. We got some budget. Let's get into this video. Let's talk about the creatures. 16 creatures. I tried the with blue red prowess. It's tricky because you got to have a balance between instants and sorcery spells and like pump spells and draw spells and stuff like that and creatures. And I think I struck a nice balance or a more consistent balance. Um, you might want to tweak it depending on like your local meta, but here's what I got for you. Uh, we're going to be playing a playset of all these creatures. Bloodwater Entity, Cryptic Serpent, Enigma Drake, Spellweaver Eternal. Let's talk about the Amonkhet creatures first. Just briefly, you guys have already seen that. Cryptic Serpent is just like a, could be like a 3, 4, 2 mana, 6, 5. We got a whole bunch of ways to give it like trample or like unblockable or something like that. So just a huge beefy dude and it's super hard to get rid of. Can't get like Fatal Push, can't get Grasp of Darkness. Basically the only things that kill it are like Murder, Unlicensed, Disintegrate. You guys know. Uh, Enigma Drake is still probably the strongest card in the deck. Um, just a three mana. Basically will be like a five, six, seven power, like a seven, four flyer like mid in like the mid game just... Super, super strong. Gives us, like, a ton of value to the entire deck. Definitely, definitely our best creature. Okay, so those are those two creatures. Now let's talk about the new additions in Bloodwater Entity and Spellweaver Eternal. Let's talk about Spellweaver Eternal first. This just fits our curve really well. We, in my other Blue Red Prowess deck, we played, like, Storm Chaser Mage. And this is, like, the substitute for it. I wouldn't say it's better than, um... Storm Chaser Mage, but this definitely can replace it pretty well. Uh, for a 1 and a blue, you get a 2-1 Prowess Afflict 2 Naga Zombie Wizard. So the Prowess is super strong, especially already since it has high power. So if this goes onto an empty board and it stays alive, and you just play like 3 or 4 spells, you're going to get like 5 damage through with it on your 2 drop, and then it's already done its drop. Even if it dies the next turn, if you can get like 3, 4, 5 damage through with this thing, it's done its job. And also, what's really nice about it is the Afflict 2. So you could swing with it. Your opponent can be like, okay, I'll block and kill this. You play a couple of instant speed spells, pump it up. It kills their creature. The Afflict 2 still goes in. And you just like two for one to your opponent. So a lot of cool tricks you can do with Spellweaver Eternal. And then let's talk about Bloodwater Entity. Because a lot of people hated this card. They didn't like it in draft. They didn't like it in constructed. But this, if there's a deck for this card, it's this one. Um, so what is Bloodwater Entity? Well, it's a three mana, two, two with flying and prowess. Okay. But the thing that makes this card good or not good, or depending on your point of view is when it enters the battlefield, may put a target instant sorcery card from your graveyard on top of your library. Now this could be really good and this can be really bad. Um, so you play this again, it's a creature at sorcery speed. So let's say you play a Bloodwater Entity and you put like a, I don't know, like a Hieroglyphic Illumination or like a Crash Through on top. Uh, or any of the other instant sorceries we're playing. Or you don't like, you don't put removal or you put a draw spell or something. Your opponent knows what you're drawing next turn. So if you're empty-handed, they know the next card you're going to draw. So they can play around it, which can be a problem. However, if you're both just grinding through the game and this you top deck this... It's still pretty strong, or it's that's probably the strongest point is when you're both top decking. You could play this, you can go re get a pump spell or a removal spell or a counter or something that you know will be good in that situation. Um, another good thing about this card is 
I, I was saying that the bad thing about it is your opponent will know what you're drawing next turn. However, there's a lot of cards where we just draw a card. Just like a one mana draw a card or we cycle a card. We can immediately get that card into our hand and then play it. Which can be super strong if we have like 3, 4, 5 mana. Um, if you like Flood Out in this deck, Bloodwater Entity can be like a good sink for that. Because you can play Bloodwater Entity, put a card on top, go draw it with like a one mana draw spell. And then play it and then there you go. So, um... Outside of that, uh, it's just a 3-mana 2-2 prowess with flying. You know, just, it can help push damage. Um, I also need to point out that you may put a target insert or sorcery card from your graveyard on top of your library, so you don't have to. So if you're afraid that your opponent's going to play around whatever you put on top, or you, you just rather top deck if there's nothing in your graveyard worth getting, you don't have to. You don't have to. It can just be a 3-mana 2-2 prowess for you with flying. So those are our creatures. Let's move to our instants and sorceries. Let's talk about the one-drop spells, or the one-mana spells. Uh, we're going to be playing three copies of Crash Through and four copies of Spark of Creativity. So Spark of Creativity, i got to tell you right now, is technically the only removal card in the deck, and I'm not even using it for removal. I mean, it, it can be removal when you need it, but mostly going to use it to um, get the top card of our deck and play it, which can be really, really important. But it can be removal. There's some really like high mana stuff in our deck that can like kill some pretty impressive things. Like Cryptic Serpent, you hit that, it's like a set. It's seven mana. Um, Hieroglyphic Illumination could be four mana. So there are eight cards that can deal like four or seven damage with this. But outside that, we're mostly using this for card advantage. And then Crash Through is mostly again used to just draw a card. But it can be really useful if you're giving like a Spell Weaver Eternal or a Cryptic Serpent Trample. Or I guess one of our flyers. Our flyers we don't really worry about trample with. But uh, if we can give one of our ground units trample. Just, again, super strong. One mana, draw a card, triggers prowess. Puts an instant or sorcery into our graveyard. Just a whole bunch of what we want in crash through in this deck. Alright, let's talk about the four other instants of sorceries in the deck. Uh, we're going to be playing four copies of Invigorated Rampage. Four copies of Tragic Lesson, four copies of Hieroglyphic Illumination, and two copies of Open Into Wonder. So Invigorated Rampage is our pump spell, and we're basically using this just to finish the game. Uh, we're trying to be like a aggro kind of deck, um, so Invigorated Rampage can do that. It can give two of our guys buffs if they have like a blocker or something, it can split up the damage. Or it can give like an Enigma Drake, like... Plus four, and, I guess, and Trample, which we don't really need. Or a Cryptic Serpent become, can become a 10-5 with Trample. Just super, super strong. Had to play the four of. You know, you draw one, you use it. Maybe you Bloodwater Entity back on top of your library. Reget it and just finish off the damage using, you know, playing Invigorated Rampage twice. Um, then Tragic Lesson is pretty strong in this deck because at instant speed... You draw two cards, then you discard a card, unless you return a land. You're not really going to return a land. Uh, most of the times, you'll just, like, discard a card, or discard a land card, or discard a creature you don't need, or something like that. The The importance of it is it draws us cards, and it's at instant speed. And I guess you can dump, like, an instant sorcery to pump up an Enigma Drake even more. So that can be super, super useful. Uh, Hieroglyphic Illumination is definitely going to be played over Glimmer here, mostly because it can cycle out really early... Um, and that's basically it. It's just like a one mana cycle card. I mean, later in the game, you could use four mana, draw two cards, but mostly we're going to be cycling with it to get more instants and sorceries in the grave. And then two open into wonder. Um, this can draw us cards, make our entire team unblockable. Um, it's card is not necessarily the best. I guess you could move, put like removal here instead. Open into wonder. Help me just get through damage when the, you know, board stalled out. So, um, also draws you card, just super, super versatile card, I guess. Uh, again, if you don't have any creatures, this card is like a super bad top deck, but I put two of them here, works fine for me, help push through damage. Let's go over the lands. Uh, we're playing 23 lands. Now that you could flex that around to 22 or 21 or something like that, but 23 felt right for me just because we have a little bit to draw spells. Um, we want to hit our mana. We want to have a both blue and red. So four Highland Lake, ten Mount or ten Island, nine Mountain. Uh, pretty simple. Let's move to the sideboard. All right, here's our sideboard. Our sideboard is actually almost as expensive as the main board. Well, quote unquote expensive. Uh, almost as cheap as the main board. Uh, we're playing three sensor, uh, mostly against like mid range decks or decks that might you know have you know 
have a better curve than us. Uh, two Dispel directly against Control. Four Magma Spray against Romunap Red or other, other aggro decks. Three Negates against Control or uh, Removal Heavy decks, I guess. Um, and three Shocks against Control. Um, a pretty solid sideboard. Now, we don't have any um, like Crooked Condemnation or Scavenger Grounds, so we don't have Graveyard Hate. The plan is against like uh, God Pharaoh Gifts decks and Reanimator decks is just to push as much damage as fast as you can before they can get their plan set up. If we play Crook and Condem Condemnation, it doesn't draw us cards. It's not an instant or sorcery. It can actually hurt us because we get rid of all the instants or sorceries in our graveyard. So um, there's like I've I've said in my other videos that uh, if I'll play Crook and Condemnation, if it hurts our opponents more than us. But our entire game plan is having our graveyard full. So we kind of don't want it. Uh, we actually don't want our opponents playing it either. So we're not going to play it here. We're just hoping to run over our opponents before they can drop some huge reanimated targets. So uh, that is why there's no Crook of Condemnation in the sideboard. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Go ahead, leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe. If you are new and click the top eye icon right hand corner. I know I said all this already, but vote for next videos deck tech. Um, I think there's three choices up there now. Maybe that's still no, there should be three up there. So three choices up there. I think go ahead, vote for which one you want to see and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Peace.